Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to speak to this bill, Social Services and Other Legislation Amendment, brackets Coronavirus and Other Measures, bracket Bill 2020. I move amendments circulated in my name, and I'd like to read those amendments into Hansard because they are extremely important for this side of the House. That all the words after that be omitted with a view of substituting the following words. Whilst not going to claim to give the bill a second reading, the House 1 notes that a, since the start of the recession, a number of people relying on unemployment payments has doubled, b, many pensioners, including those on aid pension, disability support pension and carer payment, have faced increased costs during the pandemic, and c, the minister has the power under the Social Security Act to extend the corona supplement and calls on the government to one extend the 250 per fortnight corona supplement until march in line with jobkeeper and b better support pensioners including age pension disability support pension and carer payment recipients facing increased costs in protecting uh, their health because of the coronavirus pandemic and C, announce a permanent increase to the base rate of job seeker payment. They are the amendments circulated in my name. And I can, I, I'd like to also point out uh, to the House, Mr Speaker, that there are 18 Labor people speaking on this bill, uh, compared to four from the government. Uh, there is also someone from the crossbench obviously speaking on it because this is something that we consider to be absolutely important and it is consistent with what Labor has been saying for months and months and months, particularly a permanent increase to the base rate of job seeker. And I uh, advise the House that uh, in estimates this morning, the government has refused once again to actually, um, actually agree that there needs to be a permanent rate to job seeker and are, are busily backpedalling on that right now. This bill seeks to implement a number of coronavirus support measures from the budget, measures which Labor has previously called for for many, many months. Labor has long called for greater support to pensioners who were left behind by this government when it enacted its cruel and disrespectful pension freeze just a few weeks ago. For months, Labor has called on the government to adjust the work test to ensure parents who are impacted by the coronavirus recession who lost hours or lost work would not miss out on paid parental leave. At the height of the pandemic, we asked the government to adjust means testing for youth allowance so students, students would not call, fall, call, fall through the cracks. And the supports for families who lose a child to stillbirth or before their first birthday will be welcomed by many of my colleagues who have been brave and tireless advocates in this place. Losing a child is a devastating and heartbreaking experience, and we commend the government for finally coming around to enacting these important supports. But I do once again put on the record it is something that Labor has advocated for for a very, very long time. Nevertheless, the government's budget still left too many Australians behind. There is no certainty for the 1.6 million Australians on JobSeeker as to what support will be available after December the 31st, and there still is no uh, announcement about that. And there is absolutely no reason why the government couldn't have addressed that issue in the budget statement just a couple of weeks ago except there was a deafening silence about this group of people. And we are talking about 1.6 million people, the most vulnerable people in our community, who still don't know what their future holds after the 31st of December, and will have to wait, obviously, to find out about that. It, was, it is certainly not addressing a permanent increase, increase to the job seeker payment, which everyone agrees to, including a number of people on that side of the House and including the uh, ex-Prime Minister of Australia, John Howard. 
and almost one million Australians on JobSeeker are ineligible for the government's wage hire subsidy. And those who receive the pension, disability support pension and carer payments continue to face increasing costs in protecting their health because of the coronavirus pandemic. And there has been much media commentary on this. Additional costs with masks, additional costs with doctor's appointments, additional costs for psychiatrist appointments, and additional costs in just trying to keep themselves safe. Many people, particularly those people in, on the age pension and the disability support pension, face compromised um, immune systems and face many issues that make them, them more vulnerable to coronavirus. And for those people, and I'm sure that uh, my colleague, um, uh, some of my colleagues, well, my co all my colleagues will agree with this, um, and that is that what happens for people who are carers, who are making sure, uh, many of them not having any recognition for it, who are making sure that they're keeping their loved ones safe. And those who receive these pensions, these disability support pension and carer payments, should not have to face increasing costs and not be uh, compensated and reimbursed for those costs. And our amendments uh, are calling on that. Pensioners have been facing rising health, dental, energy and grocery bills for years. Average GP out-of-pocket costs alone have gone up $11 under this government. And so Labor will be moving the detailed amendments to better support Australians who are unemployed or who have, been endure, who have endured extra cost because of the coronavirus supplement. Labor's amendments I read into the Hansard, but let me expand on them. Extending the coronavirus supplement is absolutely fundamental. Our amendment will create an obligation on the minister to extend the $250 payment per fortnight of the coronavirus supplement until March in line with JobKeeper. It, is, it makes absolutely no sense to Labor, absolutely no sense, that those on JobSeeker should not have the same respect shown to them and the same certainty shown to them for those people who have to rely on JobKeeper. It is $250 a fortnight, um, but once again, the people who are in job seeker, the 1.6 million people I spoke about earlier, have absolutely no certainty under the 31st of December, after the 31st of December. It must be terrifying for those people who are just putting ends together as it is, um, sometimes not actually doing that. Many of these people have no reserves, absolutely no reserves to fall back on. And it's just incredulous to me that the government, and particularly the Treasurer and the Minister for Social Services and Families, does, rec does not recognise um, and has not taken up the responsibility that they should feel about giving people 1.6 million Australians some sort of certainty. How can we as a society hold our heads up if there is not that certainty for the most vulnerable. And we're not talking about people uh, who are sitting on the lounge and collecting money as the government has briefed out to the media. We're talking about single mums. We're talking about women in their 50s and 60s who are renting. We're talking about people who are really struggling and know where every single cent goes. They are not bludgers. They are not uh, sitting back and allowing the state to look after their affairs. They desperately want work. And the least that we can owe them, the least that we can give them, is some sort of certainty after Christmas. And that does not exist now. And as I said, we are having estimates at the moment, and there is a refusal to, to commit to anything. There is a refusal to uh, actually, actually say this is what we're considering. And, and you know, for, for the idea that these people have to wait to uh, the next statement from the Treasurer in the mid-year budget update is just outrageous. 
and who knows if there's going to be any certainty given in that? Who knows if it's just not an extension of temporary money? <coughs> there is no argument that people cannot live on $40 a day, and yet that is the prospect that 1.6 million Australians have come the 31st of, of December. So Labor will be moving detailed amendments to better support Australians who are unemployed who have been in, who ha, or ha, who have endured extra cost because of the coronavirus supplement. Our amendments will create an obligation on the minister, as I said, to extend the $250 per foot corona supplement until March in line with JobKeeper. The coronavirus supplement is scheduled to end in December. With 1.6 million Australians currently on JobSeeker and a further 160,000 Australians expected to lose their jobs between now and the end of the year, not their fault, but that is the projection. Now is not the time to be withdrawing support from Australians who are finding it extremely difficult to keep their head above water. We should be recognising that. We should be acknowledging that. And we should also be acknowledging that those people that will lose their jobs between now and Christmas is not because they want to be unemployed. It is because of the circumstances that the world finds itself in. It is going to be an anxious and uncertain Christmas for so many people who are on job seeker. And it's cruel of the government not to give some clarity. You cannot tell me that there isn't some sort of understanding of what the government is planning to do. I just don't believe that. And the fact that there is a denial by this government of putting some clarity around that issue is, as I said, cruel. It makes people anxious and it is unreasonable. It is completely unreasonable to make people wait until mid-December before there is a decision announced on the JobSeeker payment. Until then, Australians on JobSeeker won't be able to plan their finances around major expenses such as rent, gas, electricity bills and actually food and medical care. And as I said, many of these people are young, many of these people are, are single parents and there are children involved. There are children in, involved that are relegated to poverty, relegated to the stresses that their parents must be feeling because this government refuses to provide any certainty. And I, I just don't understand that cruelty. I don't understand why the government can't clarify things and why they haven't taken the opportunity to do that. And as I said, Mr. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, you cannot tell me that there isn't some sort of plan. The answer that the Prime Minister gave in question time yesterday told us very <coughs> clearly that there is a plan but refuses to say what it is. Labor's amendments will create an obligation on the minister to better, to better support pensioners, including age pensioners, people under the disability to support pension and carer payment recipients. Unlike the government, Labor acknowledges that older Australians, people with a disability and carers have experienced increased cost as a, as, as a result of coronavirus. And surely it is not beyond the government's imagination or capacity to be able to look at this as a real issue, to acknowledge it as a real issue, and to make sure that people on those pensions should not be out of pocket uh, with those additional costs. And please don't give me the argument that there are, uh, there are payments that are coming that way. 
two lots of 250. That does not make up that does not make up for the additional expenses that the uh, groups of people I am talking about experience. In particular, they have seen increased costs in protecting their health during this pandemic. The terrifying prospect that these people face every day, that they know if they contract the coronavirus, the outcomes will be dreadful for them because of their compromised immune systems, because of their age, because of their disability, and because uh, the carers in, in particular are coming into contact with people in these groups. So there is the capacity for the minister, uh, with the powers that she has been given, to create an obligation on the minister to better support these people. Labor acknowledges that older Australians, people with a disability and carers, have experienced increased cost. Cruelly, the government froze the pension in September, which impacted those receiving an age pension, disability support pension and carer payment were affected by the fact that the government refused to uh, think about indexation. In fact, <laughs> according to the Prime Minister, he didn't realise it. Um, which, of course, is uh, not conceivable. And Labor's amendments will require the minister to announce a permanent increase to the brace rate of job seeker payment. Job seeker is scheduled to return to its old base rate at the end of December, and it is clear to everyone that it can't go back. The Prime Minister's comments in question time yesterday, as I said, acknowledged that. This will be a little of comfort to people on job seeker. His answer. People on JobSeeker deserve to know what level of support they will be available to them beyond December 31. People on JobSeeker deserve to know this. To make them endure an anxious wait is cruel, as I said, it's unreasonable and it's also unnecessary. The household budgeting for food, rent and the bills is something these people spend a lot of time doing every week. The government could provide certainty by delivering a permanent increase to job seeker, which Labor has consistently advocated for. Some members of the government, as I said, are also calling for that payment to be permanently increased. At least they're being honest. Since the rate of job seeker was temporarily boosted, Australians on job seeker have been lifted out of hardship and their children, and they had more to spend on local and small businesses. They have been able to buy food, pay bills and meet their rent. In the wake of this pandemic, the budget was an opportunity for the government to deliver lasting structural change for vulnerable Australians, with boosting local business and local jobs. But that economic as well as social opportunity was missed. Labor is concerned about the Morrison government's plan to return JobSeeker to its old base rate of $40 a day in December, with 160,000 Australians expected to lose their job and, as I said, 1.6 million Australians on job seeker at the moment. We know, what the government, we know that the government continues to try to demonise those who have lost their jobs. It's just despicable. Implying someone or somehow that these are unemployed because of choice is just wrong. There is still the plan to drug test welfare recipients before the parliament. It has been foreshadowing a national rollout of the cashless debit card. With more job seekers than each, with more job seekers than each job vacancy, there are simply not enough jobs for everyone who needs one. It's even more difficult to find a job in our regions, the result of a government failure to deliver jobs programs for our regions. Australians who are finding this a very anxious time and a certain Christmas are certainly feeling that. There are many Australians who will be wondering what level of support will be available to them after December. Many are worried about how they will afford essentials, cover rent or pay the bills, let alone buy Christmas presents for their children. We know that there are many people in our nation on unemployment payments, 
spending payments at local businesses, which of course is an economic measure. Social security payments play a vital role in sustaining local jobs, especially in times like these and especially in some communities. Australians on social security will have less to spend in those small businesses, and small businesses will have less to spend on wages and jobs. How many jobs will be lost when JobSeeker is cut in December? Labor has sought this information from the government, but the government either doesn't know or doesn't want to know. The budget left behind Australians on JobSeeker aged over 35. Almost one million Australians, by excluding them from the wage hire subsidy, and older Australians represent the largest co cohort on JobSeeker. They also have the most difficulty finding work because of structural barriers and age discrimination. The government needs to permanently increase the base rate of job seeker payment. Women and young people have been disproportionately impacted by unemployment crisis brought on by the pandemic. The government was caught out by Labor on the pension freeze of two, for 2.5 million pensions, and that's the only reason why they acted on it. Labor fought the government's disrespectful, disrespectful and cruel pension freeze. The reality is that pensioners plan for their twice yearly indexation, one in March and the other in September. The government was caught out on their pension freeze in August. The freeze, freeze took effect in September, and they made pensioners wait for the October budget before announcing any kind of relief. The government has long track record in cutting and attempting to cut the pension. They still haven't adjusted deeming rates, which still remain significantly higher with interest. Pensioners won't forget the government's record on cutting the pension. They will not forget the fact that deeming rates are still not equitable. The Liberals and Nationals are obsessed with cutting the pension, attempting to cut the pension in every budget every year. And that has been well documented by myself and others. We know that in 2014 they tried to cut the pension indexation. In the same budget, that horror budget, they cut one billion from pension to concessions. In that same horror budget, they axed $900 senior supplement for self-funded retirees receiving Commonwealth seniors health card. And in that same budget, they tried to reset deeming rate thresholds a cut that would have seemed ha seen half a million part pensioners made worse off. In 2015, they did a deal with the Greens to cut the pension to around 370 pensioners by as much as $12,000 a year. In 2016, they tried to cut the pension around to around 190 pensioners as part of a plan to limit overseas travel for pensioners to six weeks. In 2016, they tried to cut the pension for over 1.5 million Australians by scrapping the energy supplement. The government's own figures show this would have left over 563,000 Australians currently receiving this allowance much worse off, worse off. Over 10 years in excess of 1.5 million pensioners would have been worse off. They spent many years trying to get the pension age to be 70. Pensioners have paid their taxes, contributed their entire lives. They deserve our respect and the respect of this government. This bill is adjusting how someone qualifies for paid parental leave. To be eligible, a person must satisfy a work test. The existing work test requires a person to have worked 10 out of 13 months prior to their birth or adoption of a child and at least 330 hours in that 10-month period. The concern was during the pandemic that families would miss out on PPL because of job losses or having their hours reduced, making them Ill ineligible for PPL, leaving them up to $15,000 worse off. Labor called for the government to temporarily suspend the work test in April so that families would not miss out. I even wrote to the Minister for Social Services and in June we moved amendments in the Senate for the work test to be suspended but the Morrison government voted it down. 
Families need certainty about their access to paid parental leave during these challenging times. This bill will also temporarily amend circumstances in which a person may be regarded as independent um, for the youth allowance. In May, Labor called on the government to provide case-by-case -case exemptions to youth allowance parental income test. And we were concerned that tertiary students would miss out on youth allowance and would be unable to afford to continue their studies. These are not ordinary times, Ms. Ms. Um, Madam Deputy Speaker. And we do want to see what we do want to see is students discounting tertiary study. What we don't want to see is students discounting tertiary studies because they can't afford it. It is disappointing that government has taken so long to act on these issues. It has been too long an anxious period for students. In conclusion, can I say this, Madam Deputy Speaker? Labor support the measures outlined in this bill, measures that Labor has been advocating for from the very outset of the pandemic. But in just seven weeks, it is just seven weeks till Christmas, and people relying on the coronavirus supplement need certainty not cruel cuts and not a deafening silence, which is what we're hearing at this point in time. That is why Labor is moving amendments to extend the coronavirus supplement until March, in line with JobKeeper. Not an unreasonable ask. And I know that there are many people on that side of the House that also believe it is not unreasonable, at least in line with JobKeeper and require the government to announce a permanent increase to the job seeker payment. This is something that we have been advocating for for a very long time. And the government has an opportunity to fix these things. And these amendments are serious amendments. They are serious amendments. And they are amendments to provide certainty, to provide comfort, uh, to those 1.6 million, million people on JobSeeker. And it's doing something that the government is going to have to do anyhow, kicking and screaming to increase the permanent rate of JobSeeker. This is not the end of this discussion, so don't think it is. This issue will continue. It will continue because it is uh, in the interest of the economy, it is the interest of 1.6 million Australians, 2.5 million Australians on um, the age pension, over 700,000 Australians on the disability support pension, and many, many thousands of people on the carer payment. Those people provide, have provided to this country an enormous amount. In some cases, with age pensioners, a lifetime of commitment, a lifetime of service, a lifetime of paying taxes. And surely we as a parliament can remember that, and we as a parliament can do the right thing by those people. And that is what my amendments are seeking to do, the right thing. It is as simple as that, the right thing.